All right, I'd like to welcome you all to our weekly lesson study. And I am happy today because we've got a very strong team, a powerful team, and these are men that are ready to share the word of the Lord. So I'd like to welcome our viewers and those who are watching us. You could be from Calfinia, or you are here in Cape Town, or Cape Verde, or even in Haderfeld or Hawaii. I'd like to say thank you so much for joining us today. And I pray and trust that God is going to bless you as you go through this lesson with us. Uh, feel free to type your questions or your comments. We really appreciate the support that you that you share with us. So before we get started, I'm going to ask uh, my brother Tyron to give us our opening prayer, and then we'll go into our lesson for today, lesson three. Thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, let's pray. Um, gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you, Lord, once again for your goodness, Lord. Uh, we thank you, for, Father, for the Sabbath. Um, we also ask, Lord, that as we um, go into the program, the lesson study, Father, that you will uh, be with each person. And, Father, you will give us the words to say, be with the guests, be with each person that is, that is listening, be with our families, our friends, Lord. And um, may your name be glorified. May your Holy Spirit uh, move in our hearts. And um, as we speak, Father, may we speak words of wisdom so that we can draw close to you. We thank you for love in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So before we get started, I would like to ask the panel to at least introduce themselves so that people may know who is um, sharing the word of the Lord this evening. Um, I'm going to start with uh, Brother Kiyomo. If you could please briefly introduce yourself, and then I'll go to theologian Mohati, and then Brother Tyron and Brother Enver. Amen. My name is um, Kiyomo Kriel, uh, ordained elder of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I want to use the correct title. Um, I like studying the Word of God. Um, thank you for joining us on the Word of Truth channel today to, for the lesson study of Isaiah. Um, I found it quite interesting, and please have a wonderful time. God bless Okay, um, my name is Topullo Mokhati, also an ordained elder of uh, the Seventh Adventist Church, was ordained. Um, currently, finished my theology degree, so therefore I go by the title theologian uh, because I completed the degree. Happy Sabbath, all. Um, so I'm Tyron. Um, and you know, many of us probably don't know this, but there was once upon a time when I loved soccer so much um, that the Lord had to intervene. Uh, <laughs> and uh, now I love the Bible more. I love Jesus more. Um, I evangelize on the trains. You know, unfortunately, I'm a little bit depressed. It's sad. But um, God is still good and he's in control. And um, yeah, I pray that you guys will be blessed as we, we just uh, share God's word. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I'd like to thank you for availing yourselves, uh, taking time away from your families to take an hour in the word of the Lord. And my name is Kevin, and I'm from Zimbabwe, but currently I'm living in South Africa. I'm an ordained elder of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I love the Lord, uh, and I love my wife, and I'm married to only one wife. That's why I love, and I will always love my wife until Christ comes. So let's get into our lesson today. We are looking at a Another powerful lesson, we're looking at the book of Isaiah for this um, quarter. So we started with um, the first chapter when we were looking at um, crisis of identity, and then we went into crisis of leadership. So today we wanted to look at when your world is falling apart. There's a memory text that we're going to go through, and it's going to be covered by one of the panelists that's in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 9. These are the words that Isaiah spoke to King Ahaz, and he said, if you will show, if you will not believe, surely you will not be established. So as Isaiah said these words, I was reminded of what God says uh, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. 
but without faith it is impossible to please him meaning it is impossible to please god so we'll look at what the lesson talks about particularly focusing on king ahaz when he wanted assistance who did he turn to and um the lesson talks about well the introduction um gives um a, an, a small illustration um Connie and Roy, these are the characters that are mentioned in the introduction. They had um, gone on a trip and then when they came back, they found that their pets were all over the place in their farm. And one of their, of their pets was in the, in the mouth of the neighbor's dog. So as Connie, this lady, rescued her duck or rescued her pet from this dog, one of the ducks called Waddlesworth saw Connie with the duck and with the pet, and the pet had died in her hands. And the author says that this, this duck, Waddlesworth, was so afraid of Connie and would never want to be close to Connie. And whenever this duck came close to her, it would bite her or it would pinch her. And so the author says, sometimes it is hard to sort out who your friends and enemies are. So we'll try and zoom in on that and see how then can we identify those we consider our friends and we'll study with a closer look at one of the kings of Judah. So I'm going to hand over to um, Topolo. Uh, Theologian Mohati is going to take us through Sunday and Monday. And then uh, Brother Kiyomo is going to, Bishop Kiyomo is going to take us through Tuesday and Wednesday. And then Brother Tyron is going to take us through Thursday and Friday. And then uh, Brother Anva is going to share with us um, remarks from the, the days that are going to be covered. So Brother Theologian Mohati, over to you. All right, uh, thank you, thank you, Kevin. Um, you see, when, when you look at Sunday specifically, Sunday starts off, in fact, its title is very, very succinct. It speaks of dangers from the North. Now, if we, we, if we are very familiar with how the map of the Middle East is structured, we'll remember that just above Judah, where Ahaz was king, it was Israel. And Israel encompassed nine and a half tribes of, well, of what would have been the 12 tribes of Israel, remembering that Israel was at one point an amalgamation of both Judah which was Benjamin, Manasseh, and Judah, and then the rest of the, of the other tribes. And when there was conflict, um, and we remember this straight after Solomon's reign, that um, there was conflict regarding taxes, nine and a half tribes, half of Manasseh's tribe moved up and became Israel, and Benjamin, Judah, and the half of Manasseh then became Judah. Now, Ahaz is king of Judah. And with Ahaz now being king of Judah, Ahaz wants to lay siege against his brothers. Or he has been laying siege against his brothers. Now the problem is that when you lay siege too many times, there's a point whereby retaliation happens. And now Israel um, creates a treaty with Syria and then they want to now go and attack Judah. And this is now where they speak of the danger from the north. It was their very own brothers that was uh, attacking them and that um, wanted to wage war against them. And we realized that while they were waging this war, instead of Ahaz turning to God, Ahaz then turns to Assyria for help. And this is now what we discover, that while Ahaz's world is falling apart, he's got two big armies um, that were attacking him. Remember that in yesterday, in last week's discussion, um, one of the things that we perhaps did not cover was the fact that Judah had an extensive military. Now, this extensive military is now at shortfall because there are two big militaries that have combined forces and are about to attack this one small country of Judah. Now, when Ahaz sees that his military is insufficient to handle the behemoth that is the amalgamation of these two militaries, we then get Ahaz going to the enemy of my enemy thinking that it's his friend. And then this is where now we find that uh, Ahaz's world now collapses because rather than turning to God, like his predecessor Jehoshaphat, he then turns to Assyria and creates a treaty. 
And this is now where Sunday then comes in and presents the world of Ahas torn asunder. That would be Sunday's lesson. I don't know if we continue. Okay, any comments? Um, thank you so much. Very interesting outline uh, from uh, Brother Mohati. Um, any, any additions before he continues with Monday? Brother Kiyomo? I, I think you must um, continue. I, I was enjoying this theological lecture. <laughs> Amen. All right, then, let, then, let, then let's move on to Monday. Now, um, on, on Monday now, this is where we discover um, that there was an attempt at interception. This is, this is now also another very clear instruction, another clear title, because um, Ahaz is now sitting in his war room. Remember that in a war room, you have got your generals, you have got your, 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 your big guys, your, 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 you know, the people who claim to play chess almost every day and know every single battle tactic there is. Um, they, are, they are looking at, 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 at these options that they have. Um, and uh, um, you, you find that, um, in fact, one of the things that he does uh, um, is that in Isaiah 7 verse 3, Isaiah is told by God to take his son, Shejabusa, with him. This becomes one of the very interesting things that happens in that he tells him, and we can actually go and read it, Isaiah 7 verse 3, um, so that you say that I'm not, so that I'm not speaking out of my own accord. Um, let us look at Isaiah 7 verse 3 for a couple of minutes. Then we can even get the reason why such a thing is happening. And it reads as follows. Right? And it reads as follows. Isaiah 7 verse 3. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, go out now to meet Ahaz, you and, she and Shea Jasub, your son, at the end of the aqueduct from the upper pool on the highway to the fuller's field. And say to him, take heed and be quiet. Do not fear or be faint-hearted. For these two stubs of smoking firebrand were the fierce anger of Resin and Seren, and the son of Remila. Now we realize that he, he's told, he's instructed by God to take his son, to include his son in this. And in taking his son, um, he, he, he then surprises Ahaz because instead of the prophet saying, um, he, 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 you, you listen to the name, right? Um, the name is a remnant shall return. That is Shea Jesu. Now, it's very interesting that such a name is given to a son. So therefore, we find that this becomes a portrayal of a prophecy in itself. So when we find, when we look at this closely then, um, we find that he's speaking, uh, um, it's rather, it's an ominous message that was being brought out. Because understand that the first set of Zion, as he introduces his son, Shea Jasu, automatically in Ahaz's mind, is that an ominous message now? Is Judah about to be destroyed? Is it about to collapse? And this is where we realize that slowly but surely, God was actually trying to tell him that you may have made the wrong choice in who you wanted to be your battle partner in this. And then we, but however, we look closer and realize that actually Judah was going to be spared. In fact, if you read the lesson closely, you read that it says the threat from Syria and Israel would pass and Judah would be spared. Powers that look too huge to, to powers that look to us like huge fairy volcanoes were in God's sight only two smoldering stumps of firebrands. And this is what you're realizing when in verse four. But there's a conditional clause. Ahaz needed to make the right decision and not trust Assyria, but trust God. And this is now where Monday then encapsulates these two. 
Lovely. Thank you so much. And uh, brother um, Enver, would you like to contribute or would you like to add to what has been mentioned? We like the outline that we had of these two kingdoms, the north and the south, and we see um, the northern kingdom joining forces with Syria to attack their own brother. So thank you so much for that, uh, brother Enver. And then I'll move over to um, Bishop Kiyomo. Um, so you are right, because when we look at what Isaiah said to the king, King Ahaz in verse 9, he says, if you will not believe, surely you will not be established. So there's an element of faith that's required of the king. Uh, and now we see that his trust was actually misplaced, uh, as uh, Mohati mentioned, that he, he, he had to choose. And because of his lack of faith in God, he sought um, tangible help instead of seeking supernatural help from the Lord. Um, maybe uh, Brother Kiyomo would like to add and then uh, you jump straight into your days. Yes, yes. Uh, can you guys hear me? Amen. Um, what I like also in the last part of the lesson, um, they talk about the word um, believe and establish and it comes from the same um, root word which means true and which is reliable. And then they say the word amen, just um, affirm, which is true and reliable. And so basically, um, he looked at the constellation, so he did the natural thing. He went to a strong political power and he tried to make it the ally, but he subjected himself. Remember when you go there, I'm your son, when you read in the scriptures. And so immediately he made himself a, a captive. So he decided, I'm not going to allow you to capture me. I'm going to allow that guy to capture me. That was his logic. So he went there and he paid a huge bribe, the Bible say, a, 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 you owe us a lot of money just to be safe because he was now, his world is falling apart and, 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 and it's so is a true spirituality. Because also the lesson showed us that he's not really uh, the connection with God. He was already in his, uh, he was the worst king of, his, of Judah, they said. And so immediately he didn't have a relationship with Christ. So when trouble started, you're not going to go because you never cultivated that relationship. And so he went for a truth that with the, which he can see with his eyes as a good move, but God, like, like, like the theologian said, um, but God said it's just this small, smoldering as fire. It's not a real threat for God. For him, it's a huge threat, but in the, the truth, the reality to be established, God said, these are but small um, ends when I can destroy them quickly, but he lacked the faith to trust in God. So like this morning dem devotion, he was a man, a natural man. He wasn't a man in the spirit. He was a natural man. No relationship with, with, with God and immediately operated what he think was good for him. So that is actually sad. Uh, my part um, about the lesson uh, is another chance. So now there's a, a Isaiah tried to intercept him. We must not, we'll read um, um, inter that intercepted message. And so look here, before you're going to make the mistake, so while he's on his way to sin, God jumps in. Isn't it powerful? No? While he's walking away from him, God has said, look here, brother, come here. And it reminds me of Jonah. Jonah was on that, on that boat going in the opposite direction. And he had, and God made the certain world, his world fall apart. Jonah's world was really fall apart. And now he said, he knew he's the cause of this. You know, sometimes God may rock our boat, but in the meantime, he's rocking you because the lesson talks about um, um, why did God allow um, Ahaz to go through these things? Because if you read in, the, in Isaiah, he rebelled against God. He, so God wanted to get him back in line, but he is panicking 
And so God told him, look here, it's intercepting. And Isaiah comes, give me a sign. Ask God for a sign. And I like the, the writer of the lesson. He basically says, God said, ask me for anything. He goes to the text um, where um, um, God, and he compared God's generosity. God said, ask anything, his deepest um, um, soul, uh, deepest heaven. Um, and, and the writer interpretation is, God said, ask me for anything. This is, he said, this is a lottery opportunity, but from God, he could have asked for anything. And then he was so clever. I can't believe it. His response was, I think, the most religious response ever. If you don't know, if you're a natural man, when God asks you to do something and you say, no, man, I don't want to put the Lord of God to the test. And what I like, the lesson alludes to the, the experience in the wilderness. So he's telling um, um, Isaiah, no, man, I don't want to put the Lord of God to the test like our forefathers did. He, he, he have a garb of religiosity on him, you know, but in the meantime, he's rebelling. He don't want to ask God. God gave him a, a blank check. Ask me for anything. And he still say, no, how? You know, how blind can you be? So immediately, Isaiah is not happy. And then what, what I wrote in my notes, he do not want to test God, but in yet he was testing God by not taking what God was offering him. And Isaiah let him know, hey, you, you're weary men, but now you're wearying God now. You know, and, and it, that's the depth you can go to. So if you are called to do something for God and you're going to hide behind religious terminology, then you're a natural man. You're not a man of the spirit. This guy was really, he didn't want to. <laughs> it is sad. And even in my notes, it, it says here, the lesson study, God was willing to empty heaven just to prove to him that God is with him. You know? And then we can jump to, must I now jump? Yes, let's jump. I, I, I think we exhausted this. God say, um, um, God, in, in, oh yes, I like this part with the lesson. The lesson say he's not putting God to the test because God asked him to test him. Like in um, Malachi 3 verses um, 10, it says here, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. None tithe paying seven day adventures. Bring all the tithes the, the, into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this. That's what God is asking. God gave him the same, try me. Just give me a return to me what is mine and try me and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out, uh, pour out for you such a blessing that it will, there will be no room enough to receive it. And I think of the fishermen on the boat. And when Christ said, put the net on the other side and that boat couldn't handle, that's the blessing of obedience. And he chose no I'm going to go in my political understanding, what I see on the ground. But um, Paul say, we walk, we don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith. We, what you see is not the true reality. It's going to disappear one day. But the, the eternal is the unseen thing. And God said, look, you trust me. No. And so his struggle was to trust God. And then you get the sign. I must tell you, um, I want Pastor Topolo to preach. Give us a lecture. One day. I can't say Pastor anymore. Sorry, forgive me. I, I, I repent. Um, theologian Topolo. Um, I want to study the historical context of Isaiah 7 verses 14. Because the lessons say, look here, they have a different interpretation. What it means? Was it Ms. Um, Ayaz uh, or um, Zeke, um, Zekai, or maybe the son and that's going to bring back and restore everything. My, uh, we know, let me first give the, the, the messianical interpretation. Emmanuel is used in the New Testament when the New Testament, the fuller revelation comes that that prophecy shows to Christ. The, the virgin will, um, give, will give birth to a son and yeah, Matthew say it, he applies it to Jesus Christ. You know, um, um, Isaiah 11, and, um, the, the rod in the stem of Jesse, Revelation chapter 22, verses 16 say, um, I, Jesus, have seen my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. So these prophecies is applied through the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of Christ to show that he is the Messiah of Israel. So, so, so God is telling him, look at the, you have a danger here. And, and God giving him a sign that I am with you. You are struggling to take my offer. I want to show you that I'm with you. The same thing with the prophet. Um, um, I was it was it Elijah or Elijah when when Elijah had to ask God to open the 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 the, the, the son of the prophet with him to open his eyes. And so when God opened the, the, the servant's eyes, you can see the multitudes of God is never outnumbered. And in this case, God says, I'm with you the whole time. 
and he didn't understand that. But the fuller application is that our world is falling apart now. And Christ is the Emmanuel, God with us. And during this time, when the medical constitution is falling, when the, the, when the world is now telling us that what the Bible says is wrong and you can't live it, when legislation is getting against the Bible, you can't say things like you said before. You can't criticize things. You have to be so careful and politically correct because you can land in prison. If you call a spade a spade, no? You must be careful in America. The, the pronouns, we live in a dangerous world, but yet in these times, God is with us. And I think this is the lesson we get from this portion of scripture here that um, um, Ayaz was determined not to go the course of God and follow that route. He wanted to do his own thing. And in the long run, he got immediate satisfaction, but in the long run, he was more in bondage than before. Sorry, I was too long, people, amen. Amen, you are not long, Brother Kiyomo. It was actually very good that you, as you continued from where uh, theologian Mohati left off, you were able to show us um, that he was given another chance. And he was even asked that you can ask the Lord anything i mean if god was to say that to me i would ask to be in heaven and this king was given a chance ask anything of the lord and um just to add to what uh, brother kiyomo mentioned when the lord spoke through isaiah and said you can ask of your lord god anything and when the king did not ask for a sign isaiah changes his tone and uh, when you look at what isaiah says he says, why do you weary my God? So the tone changes. So it's as if Isaiah is saying, because you rejected this gift, which God wanted to give you, God is rejecting you as his, as his son. So sometimes we weary the Lord by putting on, like Brother Kiyoma said, this garb of trying to look religious and all holy. And yet the inside, uh, Brother Enver mentioned this before we started, before we went online. He said, what matters is our hearts. Uh, comments before we give uh, Brother Tyron. Any comments to what we've um, discussed so far? Um, it's a very powerful lesson and it's hitting home. When our worlds are falling apart, when your world is falling apart, who do you turn to? Brother Enver? Yes, um, thank you, Brother Kevin. Thank you, Brother Kiyama, for speaking so beautifully there. I think I'll bring it back home quickly. Um, there's a question at the bottom as, as well that says, what does this day study teach us about God's forbearance and his willingness to bring all of us to salvation. And I think that is a very pertinent question because this is where we are right now. Um, we will all want God to be here right now with us because um, I was sitting there this afternoon next to my wife, next to my wife, and as hot as she is, it was even more hot because um, I don't know if it was her that was hot or is it the heat outside. We have the sea here in our midst, but we have no access to the sea. <laughs> and, 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 and besides the heat, there's also flies. So it feels like hell. <laughs> if, you, if you get what I'm saying, it feels like hell. And, 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 and I asked the question, I asked my wife this very same question as well. Like, why do you think God is forbearing and is... Um, um, and, his willingness to bring all of us to salvation. It is such a personal thing, and that is, and that is why um, it is so important that we need to live our lives in accordance to God's will, so that people, uh, because mo most people just don't want to listen anymore. And my wife shared something so beautiful with me. Um, she shared something about obedience. You know, if if you cannot obey. God right now with the little right and, and I and I actually I actually mentioned just for an example um God said from this tree in the garden you may not eat and it was a simple instruction it was instruction that Adam and Eve understood to the T so if 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 we can believe God and take God and believe him on the simplest thing and it will be easier to trust him later on with the bigger things, with the bigger things. But because um, we, we, we play around and we allow the devil to intercept and, 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 and to speak to us, um, did God surely, did God surely say, you know, a play on words, a play on words. So um, the reason why we, 
we're in hell at the moment is because God is a forbearing God, you know, He's a long suffering God, He doesn't want any one of us to go missing, lost, He doesn't want anyone to be lost. So, um, I just wanted to highlight that quickly. And then, um, what does it tell us about the blindness and the hardness of the human heart? And I like what, what Brother Tiamo mentioned about Jonah because. I, I mentioned to my wife as well about Jonah, and I mentioned about Pharaoh, and the contrast between the two. And I said, but look, look at this now. Jonah knew exactly what he needed to do. He didn't want to do it because he knew God will save Nineveh. He knew it because he sat there, and while he's sitting there, he's having a front row seat to see how Nineveh will be destroyed. No, but that was because of obedience. When, when the king heard, when one king heard, he made a decree and the whole Nineveh got saved. And, and, and look at the opposite now. Then I asked I ask the, the question, now, why would God harden Pharaoh's heart? <laughs> now, if you remember, when Moses went the first time, Pharaoh didn't want to listen. How many times did Moses go until God had to harden his heart? So, may we not be at the point where God hardens our heart because we don't want to listen or we don't want to obey or thank God by His word. Thank you, gentlemen. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for bringing that up, uh, Brother Anvil. God's forbearance and willingness that none should perish. He gives us chance after chance. Uh, Brother Tyrone, if you could please take us through Thursday and Friday. Thank you so much, panel. Kiamo, Inver, Kevin. Um, so I won't keep I won't keep you guys long. I'll put it short, um, but I will take a slight uh, angle uh, because this speaks to my heart. When I when I look at the topic, I see God with us. And when your world is falling apart, you know where do you go? What do you do? Um, and I just want to start off by saying that you know um, <clears throat> that when we're talking about God with us. Um, when I look at this pandemic or you look at this COVID and many people are asking questions, where is God? And yet we're talking about a title, God is with us. Um, it's the same like when you go to the, to the beach or the sea and as you stand on the, on the sand, the sea of glass, if I may say. <laughs> but as you stand on the, on the sand and you look uh, towards the, 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 the ocean or the sea, you, you have a glimpse of, of, of the ocean. You don't have the whole view. And so it's the same way when we look at this great controversy between good and evil. We, we don't have the knowledge that God actually wants us to have to understand who he is. And it was never God's will for us to go through this difficult and, and, and through this uh, times that we're going through. And so um, I just want to encourage those when we're talking about God with us, it might seem... Uh, it doesn't make sense. How can God be with us when I lose my job? How can God be with us when all these things, uh, especially when it happens to you? Um, I just want to uh, read something. It says, <clears throat> always everywhere God is present and always he seeks to discover him himself to each one. God does not give us everything we want. But he does fulfill his promises, leading us along the best and straightest paths to himself. And that is so profound because it's, we, 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 we're talking about the book of Isaiah, but <clears throat> I want us to understand that as we're living in serious times, as much as we look into the Old Testament and look in the Bible, uh, as we're living right now in the present time of this crisis, um, when the Bible says God is with us, when, when, when I really see that, and okay, I'm not touched on it, it's when the book of Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, when it speaks about Emmanuel, the word Emmanuel means God with us. When we look at the Old Testament, we, we notice that God spoke everything to existence. He was with Adam, but because of sin, God separated. And God was always with those people. But I want you to understand that when we really see God in action, when we really, we really see God close to humanity. Yes, in Genesis, God came close. But when you really see it, it's when Christ became human. And this is why I'm touching on this, because this gives us hope. 
it gives us hope that God comes in the human nature, if I can say it in that way, he comes close to humanity. And as he comes close to humanity, he says, when you go through pain, I want to go through that pain. I want to feel exactly what you are feeling. And so what I'm trying to say this, this evening is that despite of what we're going through and despite of the challenges, God is with us. It might not seem that God is not with us, but the Bible tells us that he is as close. In fact, some people and scholars, and I'm, I'm okay, I'm always preaching, or Kevin always preach on this, um, but we always look at the disciples when they had the Holy Spirit. Or in fact, some people say that we are closer to God than the disciples because we have the Holy Spirit. So I, I don't know, maybe that's another question for another day. <laughs> but I want to encourage each person that's listening that as we, you know, I know it's not easy when we listen to this, when we hear a friend died of COVID. I mean, my, my wife had COVID a couple of two weeks ago. I had COVID as well. And so the question is, is God really with us? Yes, he is. Because Jesus says that in, in the book of John 16, that he had overcome this world. And so because Jesus overcame, we can also overcome despite of you of us falling short of God's glory. And so I just want to remind us that Jesus is on our side. God is with us. And this is why we are here this, this on the Sabbath day uh, to, to encourage each person. Might, there might be someone listening that, that is maybe has COVID or maybe they're going through something, don't have a job. And so I just feel that I need to touch on that, that go to the word of God. Put your trust not in man. Uh, as we heard this morning, uh, one of our preachers was speaking about the, you know, the, uh, the woman that was, that was sick for 12 years. And the first thing we do as a human, in, and that's our nature, the first thing we do is when something is wrong in our lives, who do we first go to? <laughs> we first go to um, the doctor or we go to someone and we don't really go to God. And it's the same way that Many of us run away from <clears throat> our problems or we, we run away when God speaks to us. And how do we know that? Uh, it, it was uh, mentioned earlier on in the book or the story of Jonah. And many of us are living that lives that when God is calling us and God is still calling us. And we know, and, and as someone is listening right now, we know that God has uh, been speaking to you for a long time. God has been ministering. God is speaking. God has been pleading. And so when you look at the world today, God is speaking through, even through this, uh, this corona. God is pleading. He allows these difficult times and he allows these, um, these pandemics or, or this crisis. He allows these things to take, to take place in our, in our world so that we can draw closer to him. And so I plead with each person uh, on this, at this time that we will, if, if, there's, if we're still struggling, you know, struggling to give our life over. Ask yourself a question. That thing that is in your life, that is holding you from giving you your life over to Christ, that thing, ask yourself, can that thing save you? Can that thing, whoever is before Christ, can that thing save you? And so I just want to leave you with this verse in the book of Acts chapter 17. Yeah, in verse 27, we're talking about God with us. Acts 17 verse 27 says that they should seek the Lord if happily they might fear after me, after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. May God bless. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Tyron. Very interesting and encouraging because at a time like this, we need that assurance that God is with us. And before I hand over to the to the panel, I just want to read a comment, uh, and I'd like to thank those who are watching right now and those who are following us. Um, Hilma Carolas men, uh, wrote the following. Sorry, and, as uh, Pastor Hilma Carolas. Pastor, Pastor Hilma Carolas, thank you so much. <laughs> we, we are allowed to say that. Thank you. <laughs> So, it, and this is what was, um, was shared with us. At all times and in all places, in all sorrows and in all afflictions, when the outlook seems dark, 
and the future perplexing and we feel helpless and alone, the comforter will be sent in answer to the prayer of faith. Circumstances may separate us from every earthly friend, but no circumstance, no distance, no or no distance can separate us from the heavenly comforter. Wherever we are, wherever we may go, he is always at our right hand to support, sustain, uphold, and cheer. And this is a quotation from Desire of Ages, page 669, and that's paragraph four. Thank you so much, Pastor, for sharing that with us. Uh, encouraging words that will go a long way to those that are watching, those who are listening. And I'll hand over to the panel. Um, comments, questions, before we look at our three questions for the evening. Um, I Bishop just want Kiel. to read, um, Pastor Corrales also um, um, put this, he said, on, um, on, on in this point, not to leave it for later, the time is coming in the f in, um, when in the fraud and insolence of men will reach a point that the Lord will not permit them to pass, and they will learn that there is a limit to the forbearance of Jehovah um, and as he's give the reference there, I, I don't know, it's double C H. <laughs> but uh, um, what I like about this, we spoke about it in the lesson study this morning with our lesson study of Brother Kevin, and the point come of that God, when we spoke about why God allow people who harden people's heart, and we, and we discovered in the lesson study, God don't harden their heart, but God eventually give them over to God. Just trying to pursue them, change the same with Ayaz in, in, in this lesson. Um, change your ways, change your ways. He's a man, a natural man. He wants knows nothing to do with God, and yet God pursued him. That he must make a decision for God, and yet he discovered himself that there was a limit to God calling him tenderly, and God just allowed him to go in his course. And so, even um, that quote from Pastor Corolla is so fitting, and it's fit just to give a balanced view. Because some people think that I can just do whatever I want to do. God will forgive me when I decide to come. You know, and and that is a very dangerous grounds. That's true. Um, someone else can comment. <laughs> Brother Enver, um, they piggybacked off your point. If you could please add also to that. Yes, thank you very much, gentlemen, for, for stealing my spotlight. Uh, because I wanted to mention about Pastor Corollas. And now you guys just jump in there. You know, Pastor Corollas is my friend. And he was mentioning on my pointers here. And we want to thank him for, for, for watching. And I was waiting for you, Pastor, to say something. Um, anyway, I, I want to bring it further home again, and I, I want to go to the bottom part. It says, dwell on the reality of Christ, of Christ coming into humanity, and we, 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 we're talking about Jesus here now. What kind of comfort can this reality give us amidst what seems like a cold, um, fearsome, and uncaring world? And it certainly does feel like that right now at this moment. And myself and my wife were speaking, and I actually pictured those last moments of Jesus. Because remember, Jesus was in a human form, and we are experiencing these things right now. So the, where is the best place to learn is to learn from Jesus. And thank you, Brother Tyron, as well, for, for your comment there. Beautifully summed up as well. Um, and where else to learn better than from Jesus himself? And so I mentioned to my wife that... As Jesus was walking, they said, all right, you think you are the king of kings. Here's your, here's your cross. Um, carry your cross. So as he was carrying that cross, knowing that he's not a criminal, he carried that heavy cross. He was spat upon. He was humiliated. He was insulted. And, you know, I must be honest with you, I get very offended when someone swears me for nothing. Then I then it, it gets me heated when... Brother Kiyomo, remember with the list that we spoke about, um, that angry is still there. And I asked God, like, what is it? What can I do next when that happens? When? And immediately, it, it, it came back to those abbreviations. What would Jesus do? And I was looking actually at, at, at what Jesus did. He continued carrying that cross. On his mind was salvation for you and I. It wasn't the, 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 the heavy cross. It wasn't the, the, the blood, it wasn't the, the spitting, it wasn't the sweat, um, but it was the end point in mind, which is you and I, salvation, um, so that you and I can live with him. And, 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 I, and I actually mentioned, I said, you know, there's a few characters that I want to meet one day in heaven. And remember that this guy that, that carried 
um, that helped Kenny actually the cross. So uh, I just played with it a little bit um, while speaking to my wife and I said, look, I think because that guy also carried the cross, I wonder if they didn't mock him as well. Um, saying, okay, you want to be, you want to be brave star now. Now come, um, let's give you also a, a whipping. Let's give you also um, peace of our mind. Let's also spit on you. We don't know what really happened, but I would like to really meet him. What was his name? Um, Simon. <laughs> I'm not too sure. Simon, eh? His name was Simon. And um, I would really like to meet Simon, man. I thought I would only want to meet um, um, Enoch, but now I want to meet Moses. I want to meet Simon. I want to meet Daniel. Definitely, for sure. The list is getting actually um, longer now as I as I look at it now. Um, and I would like to meet Isaiah as well because, like we, we, we mentioned earlier on, Isaiah had a very daunting task, but he was straight to the point. And he, uh, remember, sometimes we, we hold back because we don't want to offend people. But in holding back, we're not helping them upwards. We're holding back and um, Jesus overcame on the cross. Let me not lose my pointers. Jesus overcame um, whatever challenges, um, whatever um, realities that, that we are facing right now. Jesus overcame it um, because he had his purpose in mind. The only time when 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 mm-hmm. when everything became real to to Jesus on the cross was when heaven and earth separated. And that, I think, separated the two worlds. And that, that, that was, was, was something. So we, we don't want to be, I actually asked my wife, do you think there's people that are in that state right now? I, I don't know. You really, in, 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 fact, in fact, must be the reality right now for someone on this earth where, where heaven and earth is separated. Your that must be a dark place, right? Pastor Yuma, maybe write something on there just for, for some light as well. Thank you, panel. I'll, I'll give over. Thank you so what much, Brother Anna. What will Jesus do now in this pandemic? <laughs> <laughs> Brother I, I Tyros. Can I answer? I <laughs> yes, answer? Brother Kimo. Can I, uh, um, can I check and answer? Yes, then I'll, then I'll ask you another question. Jesus will wear a mask. He will have sanitizer with him. He will feed the hungry. He will make sure there's social distancing and he will tell people, um, be safe and have faith in God, but follow the rules. Jesus will follow the rules. Jesus was not against the rules. He was against man-made rules that take everything out of proportion, but the rule that promote life. That's the principle. The Sabbath, when they said Jesus broke the Sabbath rule, they said yes, but then Jesus will take <coughs> the goat or the sheep out of the um, out of a pit. And when so whenever there is about the preservation of life, the healing on the Sabbath, the commandment is there to protect life and to promote life. That is the principle of Jesus and that is hermeneutic. So when you have an interpretation that is totally against um, promoting life and you use the garb of religion, religion, then there's something wrong. Then you're not following in the footsteps of Jesus. Jesus will never cause the death of someone else. He is life and life in abundance. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you very much, Brother Kiyoma. So it's, it's um, very interesting because I know in the Adventist cycles, this is a discussion. Um, the COVID and also um, should we wear masks, but it's not what we want to talk about here because want to say, when your world is falling apart, what do you do? Who do you turn to? And I'll, I'm going to ask the panel, thank you so much um, for your comments. Thank you for um, going through the lesson with, um, with our audience. Let's have a look at the first question and says, now, when you are in the process of making a decision, is it appropriate to ask God for a sign? So I know that Brother Kiyomo said that the king had an open check. So is it appropriate to ask God for a sign? Now the question says, what dangers are possibly inherent in doing something like that? So this is open to anyone. Uh, we've got two more um, questions. <clears throat> um, I'll just touch on, uh, I think uh, this is debatable. I think we can come with our own human ideas, whatever. But I look at myself and we, and, and, and I, and I, when, before I met my wife, I, you know, that was one of the things, Lord, Lord is this, is this a sign? Is this, is this the one? Give, and this is true. I, and I'm confessing now that 
uh, before I met my wife, Kayla, I, I asked God, is this the sign? Show me a sign. I, in fact, my prayer was, Lord, um, if it's not your will for me to, to be with Caleb, then cut our relationship, you know. But I want that sign still. Um, <clears throat> I still think it's, it's, it's really challenging when we're talking about give me a sign. What sign are you looking for? Um, do you want... A, a dream, God to speak to you in the dream, the but, sign. Brother, brother, um, Taylor, I think Did you I get the sign? I think most of the time that never happens. Maybe you can, Kuyama, you can tell me if it's wrong, but I, I never got a sign in my dream where the Lord just said, here's the woman, she has white, her ears blown out, whatever. I, I never got that you sign. Must be, but, you must be blind if you didn't see the sign. It is a very beautiful <laughs> woman. <laughs> but um, the, point, <laughs> the point is that I, I think it still comes back when you're looking for the sign. Um, I mean, <clears throat> the, the, the Bible speaks about when they came and they said, uh, Lord, give us a sign. Um, so we still have to go back first to the word. That is the foundation of when we're looking for a sign. Lord, is it the sign? Is Because we know that Satan can perform signs and wonders. So we might go to the sign and say, Lord, so is sign. But Satan can hear and he can and, and give you a sign. And so how do you know it's God? So I think we have to still be careful because miracles will happen. We'll see signs and wonders, and we're going to say it's God, but how do we know it's God? So we still need to go back, and if it doesn't, uh, if it's not in the word of God, let us let us be safe and let us make sure that we are standing on God's word. Um, Camel? Amen. Brother Camel? Oh, oh, okay, um, um, okay, I will answer. <laughs> uh, uh, from my own experience, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll give my testimony again um, why I made it to list. Uh, and I always tell Celestia, you have choice. You're the one God chose. <laughs> but um, what I want to say, when I look in answer, the incidents that happened in my life, um, I know one time um, my, my dad firmly believed in corporal punishment and he was a, um, a master in it. So um, I made sure that I obey him because I would be destroyed. I'm telling you, you know how to destroy in such a way you're down and out. So... Um, just a small thing, um, my, my, my uh, stepmother had to go away to, um, um, to her family, and I forgot the key at the house. Now, it's an accident, uh, it's something that flew, uh, uh, just slipped my mind. So my dad came home, there was no key, keys in the house. She, uh, stepmother is gone, and, and he's now angry at me because I was supposed to take the key. But I don't know that I forgot the key, so I was at my friend's place. My cousin calling me, he's on, in Outbay. Um, we, we knew in the heart of the mountain, there by, by, by high level, not high level, road, there by Hungry Hills. The people got food in Hungry Hills, don't worry, it's called Hungry Hills. So I was in Hungry Hills today, so it's actually in the mountains, so there's a hill next to the road. My cousin is standing in the mountain, and he called me, Kiyom, Kiyom, and I got a strong feeling to go to him, but I'm not in the mood to walk up. And I'm, in conf I'm conflicting here. I'm fighting with myself. If he call me again, and it's strong, I'm telling you, in hindsight, I knew that was the Holy Spirit trying to pull me, um, sun go up, and I don't want to go, you called me the third time, I said no, all I feel, somebody hit me with a big hand behind my head, and kicked me with the rat boots, you know, it's a rat and it's working boots, and I was destroyed, I'm telling, my friends used to make fun, we used to make fun of each other, they were laughing, but they were crying at the same time, they couldn't believe my dad to be so brutal, I had to stay with him for two weeks, before I went home, that was such a good hiding I received from my father, but in hindsight, when I became a Christian, I knew him, the Lord, was, that was a sign. And many times the Lord will fill our experiences when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, but we're not spiritually in tune to pick it up. Is this a sign, Lord? What are you trying to say? Because God, the word must become a, a living for us. And that can only happen when you have a relationship with God. And you're not going to be like oh, yes, who make it when God is, God is standing in front of him. Ask me a sign. God will flood our experiences with signs and say, look, and I think you could interview many Christians where something should have happened to them, but they just made a different decision. They don't know why. And they were spared some heartache or something. And, and, and that's the God we serve. To ask for a sign, the devil can manufacture. I'm very worried about it. But I do think God will flood our experience with him, with signs to help us along the way. But you must be in tune. Thank you so Amen. much. Uh, Theologian Mahati. Um, I, I'm reminded of one person who I look up to. His, his, his one statement was, the one thing that God wants you to do is to make up your mind. Um, 
when you when you look at Ahaz's um, thing, for example, God says, "Tell me what you want." One thing God wanted Ahaz to do was to make up his mind. Um, the the problem at times with the asking of a sign is that we then become complacent and sit on our hands. And once you do that, then progress then does not go anywhere. Um, you can you can be saying, God, I want to do theology, and then uh, you sit on your hands and you and you don't uh, do anything else because you 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 are do you want to do theology, but you don't have a degree. You are suffering at home. There's no employment, nothing. But you're saying, I want to do theology, and uh, God give me a sign that I must do theology while your family is suffering. And then the question then would be then, is that therefore a God that we can serve? But God says, make up your mind. Um, you want to do theology, yes. But at the same time, I am one who speaks of preservation of life and, and, and uh, of under, under all circumstances. So therefore the one thing that um, I can take away is God wants you to make up your mind. Um, and when, when your mind is made up then, Things will become probably much clearer than they than they are right now. Thank you, um, Brother Mohat. That's very true. Sometimes, you know, God wants us to make up our minds, especially for the right. And so this is what was the situation um, in terms of Ahas making a decision either to choose the right thing or to choose human assistance. Um, Brother Enver, would you like to um, add on to the question? Uh, what's the danger of asking for a sign? And um, is it appropriate to ask God for a sign? Yeah, look, it is a very good question. And I, and I think our, our, our speakers were very eloquent in their answers because in my, my personal encounter or my personal experience, God would want, brother, want us to walk in faith, you know, trusting him and obeying him. And then when we when we trust, when I say trust, you know, by him, it is word. You know, we need to become people of the book again. You know, so pretty much what the brother um, theologian uh, the follow spoke about. You know, um, what do you want? Um, that is a question that, that that God can 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 ask even us personally. Um, but I, in my life, I feel that God. Thank you so much. And um, we, I'm going to ask one more question for the sake of time. Um, the question that I would like to ask is, going back to Ahaz, he sought human assistance. And the question is, um, it is good to have human assistance, but how do you recognize its limits? 
So how do we recognize the limits of human assistance? Brother Kiyoma is already enjoying himself. I'm sure he's got an answer prepared for us. Uh, it's good uh, you know, to have human assistance once in a while, but how do we recognize its limits? I'll, I'll, I'll give this to the panel. Brother Kiyomo. <laughs> this is a very tricky question because um, let's look at coronavirus. Let's use that example. Um, somebody will say you must trust God. You don't need to wear a mask. God will protect us. That's what people said. Um, a lot of churches, people got infected in churches because they took that because they trust in God. They, we're not going to trust in human assistance. You know, um, same thing if you want, um, you, you don't have food. You're going to pray. I'll give you an example. There's this one. I forgot this name. Maybe, uh, maybe theologian Topolo will know. We're talking about um, uh, so this guy. He was he started the orphanage and he never asked for donations. They prayed every night and every time the Lord brought in. He didn't ask any. He, he decided that he's not going to ask for people. He's not going to beg. He's going to just start. He got the, the thing going. And every night they prayed. And there's times when the fridge, there's no food, no bread. There's no breakfast. Then you just take out the the, the, um, the dishes and get ready for breakfast. And then the children ask, where is the food? And he said, no, the food is coming. He's, he firmly believed that they will pray. And after the prayer, the Lord will send in and they will have breakfast. And the Lord provided. The manna story in the wilderness as well, the Lord provided. And so people will say, you mustn't get any human assistance. And I will end over this. <laughs> um, we all know the story. There was a one day of flood and there was a priest on the, on the roof. And so then, uh, uh, what came first? A guy in a in a in a on a log floating said, "Please come with us." He said, "No, the Lord gonna save me." And then a guy with a boat came. We came to fetch you. We saw. He said, "No, the Lord gonna save me." Last, the Lord sent the helicopter. He said, "No, the Lord gonna save me." And then he drowned. And then we know you, you don't go to heaven when you die. But just for the sake of a story, then he asked, uh -huh. uh, "But what happened? I was waiting for you." And the Lord said, "I came three times to you, and you did not." want to take my help and i will leave it there sometimes it's very difficult to determine but i think you need to pray first and you need to what god then god say with your faith there must be works so don't turn it around first work and then you want to pray i think the best way to go pray so good in prayer and then you put and then your faith will, that faith will produce works and you will go where god sends you but don't reject when the helicopter comes and then you die <laughs> brother Mohati. <laughs> the, the beauty of how God created humanity is that God has created humanity with the power of discernment and free will. Now, with that being said, um, it, it therefore means that we, we know that humanity can only go so far with how much they can do. Sometimes some people are not even willing to go that far. Now, this is where now your discernment comes in to determine whether or not is this humanity, is this person or this individual right or wrong to be able to assist you. Um, and, 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 and with that, I mean, the fact that God has built that within humanity in itself, then means that the onus then is on you to determine just how far um, can humanity really go or humanity can really assist you. Um, and and then the question now you to answer your question then then just how far can humanity go? There there are points where humanity cannot go very far. Someone might not have money to give you to give you money for school fees. That that's their limitation. But they can perhaps help you fund it or fund find source find funders for it. That can be then how they assist you. Um, there's also the ethical conundrums also that come into play, but I think that that, that can be semantics that can be discussed um, at a separate um, entity. But ultimately, the fact that God has given you, uh, as humanity, the ability to discern where, how far one can go in itself then um, becomes a, 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 a safe, a, a, a firewall um, against wholly depending upon humanity for, for assistance. Thank you so much. So God has placed in us this um, ability to choose the free will, as you mentioned, and also to discern. And going back to what Brother Kiyomo said, we need to pray about this, pray for the Holy Spirit, as was mentioned. We need the comforter to, discern, to help us discern uh, Brother Tyron, and then I'll give uh, Brother Anver before we, um, we wrap up. Yeah, just shortly, I'll just uh, to touch on um, what I already said. I think when you look at the beginning, God created us 
social beings. And so um, when I look at someone, for instance, uh, when we're talking about how far do we go with this, um, with assisting, I think when if I see my brother maybe in need um, and I can assist him yeah. um, in so much, then the question is, as I, as I assist him, uh, he doesn't put his trust in, 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 in me as much as I assist him. Are you with me? Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? He said, if I see someone in poverty and he cannot do anything, I assist him. But as much as I assist him, then he still needs to understand that God is ultimately the CEO. Because when we look at our relationship with one another, we, we can help one another to a certain extent. Um, I might uh, give you, Kevin, you might need maybe something, or I might need maybe Antren for, for some reason, but it goes only so far. I cannot save you, so that's limit, limitations. I can only do so much for, uh, for my brother and, and, and sister, but God ultimately, he can do anything and that's why he gets the glory, uh, because we are unable to do that, which God can do. Amen. That's true. So God is the one who ultimately can save us. We may preach the gospel, but we can't bring people to salvation. Um, mm -hmm. Brother Enver? Yes, I'm just, I'm just looking at all of you, brothers, quickly. And I'm trying to look like, like Jesus was looking through his disciples. And then he says, one of you will deceive me, <laughs> will, will betray me. So I'm just looking quickly. I'm just looking. <laughs> let me let me see if I can see Tyron. <laughs> One of you will 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 betray me. Um, no, no, brothers. I think um, by your fruit, people will know you, man. And and I'll just leave it there, man. Um, we're not we're not. I don't think um, we we can clearly read each other. I don't think so. Not always, like. Eh? But, but you will know your like-minded person. You, you will feel um, at home with someone that you can relate with. Um, I'm, I'm going to say here on this panel, there is someone here, but I'm not going to mention the name that I can feel a, a, a close connection with, you know. And, and it's just a heavenly thing. It's just a heavenly bond here. And I really would like to thank you, brother, for, 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 for being who you are because because you are connected to God, and that is why our spirits connect. The minute you start talking, I can, I can identify, I can hear God, you know, um, speaking through you. So one of you, brothers, it is one of you, brothers, here. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Enver. That's a very interesting uh, illustration that you started with. Um, when Christ said, one of you will, will betray me. So sometimes we may put our, our trust you know, on human beings and yet they might betray us. Mm. And going back to what was said, we need the spirit of discernment. We need to be mm. prayerful people, you know, and we need to put God first um, and make him the, the only thing that we trust. Um, I don't know if there are any other comments because now we have to wrap up and uh, have our, our closing prayer. Uh, Brother Kiyomo, maybe it's you that Brother Enva is talking about. When you start talking, he feels this connection. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. But I understand where you're coming from. But the, um, like one of you going to betray me because when you trust on men, the Bible makes it clear that you are that you are cursed if you trust in the arms of men and you lean on men. And many times we trust the wrong person. And his illustration, it might be funny. One of you going to betray me, but that exactly happened in the in the story with Ayers. He went to the Assyrian, um, the the good political decision, but that that guy betrayed him heavily. You know, he made a totally wrong decision. So the, the illustration, some people will think, what is this brother saying? He's making a profound point because in the end of the day, would you trust in the wrong person? Hey, I know for a fact, my own experience, trusting the wrong people, you get in trouble. <laughs> but we got to trust in God. And I think we have to, again, spiritual discernment have to come in here. I believe it there. Time is up. Um, thank you for this Amen. lesson. It was wonderful. It was great. Amen. Gentlemen, thank you so much. And may God continue to bless you and bless your families. Thank you for taking time um, to help us go through the lesson. When your world is falling apart, who do you turn to? Where do you go? Uh, who do you look up to? And um, I'd like to thank even the comments that came on Facebook, those that were sharing with us as they were going through the lesson with us, that we need to trust only in the Lord. And um, I'm going to make a prayer. Um, I'm going to share a prayer. And as we pray, 
I'd like to pray for those that have been affected, infected, and those that have lost loved ones um, due to the pandemic. Um, even on this panel, some of us have gone through that process of being infected. Some have also lost loved ones. So we're going to pray for that. Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Our Father in heaven, Lord, we would like to say thank you for using um, ordinary people like us to break bread and to share your word with your people. As we were looking at the book of Isaiah, uh, focusing on the, the king Ahaz, Lord, you have spoken through us and may glory be given to you and you alone. May it not be about us, dear Lord, but may it be about sharing the word of truth to people that need to hear truth in such a time like this. I pray, dear Lord, for families that have lost loved ones because of this pandemic and their families, Lord, that are actually facing challenges because of this pandemic, losing jobs, uh, loss of health, and some, as we speak, have brought in their prayer requests, dear Lord. And we pray for them, Lord. We ask that you may reach them where they are, touch them and heal them for your glory, dear Lord. And we pray even for some of our members, Lord, that still don't believe that um, this pandemic is real. Dear Lord, we pray that in your power, continue to shelter them that they may not be um, affected by this virus. And forgive us, Lord, where we are and help us to trust in you, Lord. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Gentlemen, Amen. thank you so much. May God bless you. And I'd like to Amen. say um, that don't give up. Um, every time I call you to come and be part of the panel, please don't say no. Uh, but I'd like to thank you all for um, availing yourselves. I know that we've gone over time, but it's always a pleasure having fun in the word of the Lord. Uh, the word of the Lord shouldn't be dull. It should be something exciting. So thank you so much. And God bless. Amen. And God to bless. our viewers. God bless. Have a wonderful week and God bless. Mm -hmm.